Hello everyone, my name is Guilherme Canella and I'm the Chief of the Freedom of Expression and Safety of Journalists section here at UNESCO's headquarters in Paris. Thank you for enrolling to this MOOC on Freedom of Expression, Artificial Intelligence and Elections. I also want to warmly thank our partners, the Knight Center, UNDP, and the Electoral Assistance Division of the United Nations for joining forces to creating this important course. As you probably know, maybe it is why, and maybe it's why you are here, 2024 is a year that many are calling a super elections year. Some even say mega. If you search online for this expression, super elections year, you will realize that most, if not all of them, of the journalists, intellectuals, officials, political scientists, activists speaking about it are particularly concerned about the potential impacts that mis disinformation might have on the fairness and freedom of the elections that are taking place. These concerns, also underlined in most of these articles, increase with the, res the recent exponential developments of generative artificial intelligence. In fact, if you ask one of the existing applications of generative AI about it, you probably also see that the machines themselves will underline this preoccupation. So, this MOOC aims to discuss these challenges. UNESCO was born almost 80 years ago with a mission to protect the free flow of information and ideas. Freedom of expression and access to information are paramount, as you know, to guarantee free and fair elections. However, if the free flow of information is polluted with huge amounts of mis- and disinformation, hate speech, conspiracy theories, for example, the freedom of citizens in getting accurate information to take their individual and independent decisions is being severely undermined. Therefore, the discussions of this MOOC are more and more relevant, including the role of those actors, like the journalists, for example, that can assist us in navigating these turbulent waters. That's why UNESCO pays such a high degree of attention in, in the safety of these professionals. Another pole of this discussion is precisely how to empower citizens, them, citizens themselves to counter the disinformation phenomenon. UNESCO here also invests a lot in education. It is what we call media and information literacy. Finally, we also need to discuss the role of the digital platforms, who are such important actors in the digital ecosystem. Recently, UNESCO has launched a global guidance of, about the governance of this system, precisely aiming to safeguard freedom of expression while dealing with the negative externalities we can, unfortunately, quite often, find in this ecosystem. UNESCO member states have also adopted the comprehensive recommendation of the ethics of artificial intelligence. This is undoubtedly a very complex environment. As we all know, this information, for example, it's, it, it is not at all a new phenomenon when we, are, we have elections. In fact, it is probably as old as elections are. What is new is what we call the four Vs. One, velocity, this information travels too fast. Two, volume, it comes in huge portions. Three, virality, it, it, it can travel everywhere. And four, very similitude, it looks very real. This MOOC will discuss the implications of this logic to the protection of free and fair elections. And needless to say, further expanding freedom of expression, access to information and safety of journalists is paramount for that. When, for instance, women journalists covering elections or women politicians speaking during elections are being harassed online, and they are all the time, their freedom of expression is being undermined, and therefore, the right of voters to have access of what these women have to say is also being jeopardized. If we don't find ways to protect, for example, the freedom of expression of these women, the collective right to this freedom of entire societies is being attacked, with serious implications to elections fairness and freedom. 
In her 2021 report on disinformation, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Promotion and Protection of the Right to Freedom of Opinion and Expression, Irene Khan, examines the threat disinformation poses to human rights, democratic institutions, and sustainable development processes. She concludes that the responses adopted by states and companies have been problematic, inadequate, and detrimental to human rights. Ms. Khan calls for multidimensional and collective responses that are grounded in the international human rights framework. In a nutshell, it is a debate we will try to foster during this MOOC. As you can imagine, nobody has definitive answers to these challenges. What we do have are cross-cutting principles, among which a key one is that any solutions, as Ms. Khan has said, must be anchored in international human rights law. That's why I would like to recall the wise view of the Brazilian pedagogue Paulo Freire about any educational process. He used to say the teacher, while teaching, is also learning, and the students, while learning, are also teaching. So I do hope that electoral practitioners, journalists, civil society organizations, judicial operators, and other interested professionals joining this MOOC will not only take advantage of the knowledge shared by us, you will also share with us your experiences, concerns, good practices. The world has a very difficult challenge ahead of us. Protecting free and fair elections is more and more a complex endeavor. However, I have no doubt that, together, we can make it and hope, and I do hope, this MOOC becomes an important variable in this equation. Enjoy. Thank you very much.